Hello, and welcome along to this introductory video from Shinobi Controls. My name is Sam Davis, and I'm a technical evangelist here at Shinobi HQ. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your first app using Shinobi Charts for iOS. I'm assuming that you've got Shinobi Charts for iOS installed on your Mac. If you haven't, then be sure to visit shinobicontrols.com to download a trial and follow the simple instructions to get up and running. This is the app that we're going to build. It's very simple, a plot of sine and cosine. During the course of this video, you'll learn how to create a Shinobi chart, how to provide data to it, how to enable the silky smooth interactions that Shinobi controls are renowned for, and how to accomplish some simple styling. So let's get started. So if I pull up Xcode, and I want to create a new project, for this I'm just going to use a single view application, very simple, um, and let's call it My First Chart. Um, notice that I've selected iPhone only. Um, all of Shinobi controls work on both iPhone and iPad, but for simplicity we're going to stick to the iPhone for this case. And there we go. Um, let's just run it up to make sure it's all working before we kick off. Perfect. All Shinobi Controls products are provided as frameworks, so in order to use it in an app, you need to link against it. If we hit the settings page and then select my first chart target, then in the general tab right at the bottom here, there's this linked frameworks and libraries section. Hit the plus, and if we search for Shinobi Charts, there's the framework. That's happened because you ran through the installer. Well now, Shinobi Charts has several dependencies. Um, the first of which, because you're using the trial, is the security framework. So if we hit the plus again and then find security and add it. Um, the next, let's find core text. And pull that out. We also need OpenGLES. That's because all of the charts are rendered in OpenGL to get the silky smooth performance you expect. And then finally, we also need libc++. And let's go through search for that and just select that and add that as well. So now we've added all of the dependencies that we have, so we're ready to go. So if we open up the view controller, let's hide that out of the way. First things first, we need to import the header. So that's a hash import. And then the header is shinobi charts slash shinobi chart dot H. Uh, and then we need to add a property for that, for the chart that we're gonna create. So let's put this the top here, non-atomic strong, it's of type shinobi chart, and let's just call it chart. Now we're going to create the chart inside view did load, so let's head on down there. So we do self.chart is shinobi chart a lock init with frame we're going to go for. Now we want the chart to fill the screen, um, but we're going to inset it, so we'll do cg rect inset. Um, self.view.bounds, and well, let's inset it by 20 points in each direction. Um, next, uh, let's set a title on the chart. So this will just appear at the top of the chart. So there's a title property. It just takes a string. So self.chart.title equals, let's call it my first chart. Um, something else that we need to set is the license key. This is because you're using the trial. This too is just an NS string. So self.chart.license key. Um, you'll have been sent this inside your welcome email. So I'm just going to go and copy that out and pop that in here. Great. Now we want this to work nicely with rotation. So it works both in landscape and portrait. Uh, for simplicity, we're just going to do it with auto resizing masks. So let's do self.chart.auto resizing mask. And let's set UI view auto resizing flexible width and flexible height. Great. Now charts have axes. If you think back to uh, charts and graphs and things you may have drawn back at school, then a chart will have a y-axis an and an x-axis. And that's exactly the same with Shinobi charts. There are lots of different types of axes, so you can have things like date axes and number axes and category axes and all kinds of different things. But here, because we're going to plot y as sine x and y as cos x, we just need number axes. 
Uh, we need to create those. They're of type S chart number axis. So let's make one that we're going to call X axis. And it's just S chart number axis new. And then we can set that on the chart. There's so self.chart.x axis. And we can set that to be this one that we've just created. And we can repeat exactly the same procedure. We also want the Y axis to be a number axis. So let's do exactly the same again, but for the Y axis. So S chart number axis new. And self.chart.y axis is equal to the, the Y axis we've just made. Finally, since the chart is a UI view, we just need to add it as a subview to the, the view controller's view. So self.view add subview, self.chart. Fantastic. You might be thinking that we're done, and maybe we are. Let's try running it up and see what happens. Ah, uh, unfortunately, we've we've run across an, an exception. Uh, Shinobi charts, a data source has not been set. What does this mean? Well, you've created a chart and you've added it as a subview and you've tried to run it up, but what you've what we've not done yet is told it what to draw. So let's take a look at how to do that next. The data for a Shinobi chart is supplied in exactly the same way that you provide data for a UI table view. That is, there's a data source protocol that you adopt, and then there are several methods that you need to implement. So if you've ever used UI table view in the past, which I'm sure most of you have, then you'll be right at home using Shinobi charts. We're going to use the view controller as the, the, the data source here. Obviously, you can use any class, but for simplicity's sake here, we're just going to use the view controller. So if we pop up to the category at the top here, and we add conformance to the S chart data source protocol. Then, just before we add the chart to the view, we just need to set the data source on the protocol to be this view controller. So self.chart.data source is equal to self. Now we've done that, all that remains is to implement the four methods that are required on the data source protocol. So if we pop down to the bottom of the view controller, um, and let's mark off a section for the data source methods. Right, it's worth understanding a little bit about how Shinobi charts understand data. There is a concept of a series. A series is a collection of data and the way in which you want it to be displayed. So for example, if I had a, a set of data points that I wanted displayed as columns, that would be a series. Um, and then I could have another one displayed on the same chart, displayed using a different method. So I could have a different set of data points displayed as, for example, a line. The data source needs to know, well, how many series have you got? So we do that using the number of series in chart method. So if we just implement that, um, we're going to use sign and cos, so we just need to do return two. Now the chart knows how many data, uh, how many series there are, but it doesn't know what they are. So the next method will return each of those series, and that's doing yeah, that's done using the s chart series index method. For sign and cos, we just want to return a line series. Obviously, there's loads of different series types, including bars and columns and bands and OHLC and various other specialist types. We're just going to use line series for this example. We want an S chart line series, and we're just going to call that series, and we're going to return. Uh, we're going to make a new one of those. Now we could just return that because it creates a new series for each of the uh, in series indices, so that's fine. But actually here we want to specify something slightly different about each of them. So let's put an if statement in. I'm going to switch on the index, so index is zero. Then we're going to set the title to be y equals cos x, because that's what our series is constructed of, y equals cos x. Um, and otherwise, i.e. the index is one, then the title will be y equals sine x. And at the end, we just need to return that series. Okay, so now the chart knows about the series, but it doesn't know anything about the data points. So first of all, it needs to know how many data points there will be. So we can go ahead and implement the next data source method that's required, and that is S chart number of data points for series at index. Now in our situation, it's quite simple. We're just going to return 100. Both of our charts, both of our series are just going to have the same number of points in. Obviously here you can do whatever you wish. You get told the series index, so you can decide. So it now knows how many data points, but it needs to know those values. 
And that's the final required method in schart data source. And that is schart data point at index for series at index. So here we get told the data, the data index and the series index. We're going to create an schart data point. That's the, the base class. There are other data point classes as well, which you'll need for specialist chart types, but most of them will just cope perfectly fine with an schart data point. Now, a data point has an x value and a y value so that it can plot it on the chart. So the data series index, the data index value, will range between 0 and 99. Um, but we want it to make uh, the range of our x-axis to go between 0 and 10. So we're just going to take the data index and divide it by 10. Now we need to provide that to this data point object that we've created. Data points have, uh, sorry, the x value and the y value of data points, um, they need to be ns numbers in this situation. So we go dp.x value. Let's just box that up using the literal syntax and put the x value inside there. Now, although our, both of our series will have the same x values, the y values will differ according to whether you're on sine x or cos x. So here we need an if statement. Now, if the series index is 0, then we want cos x. So here we're going to set dp.y value. Again, it's an ns number, so we need to box it up. And we're just going to take the cos of the x value. And similarly, for the series index as 1, then we're going to do the y value as the sine of the x value. And then finally, we just need to return that data point. So as a quick summary of what we've done here, first of all, we had to specify a class to adopt the schart data source protocol. We chose the view controller itself. Then you need to set the data source property on the chart. So we set self.chart.datasource is equal to self. And then finally, there's those four methods to implement. How many data point, uh, How many series are there? What are those series? How many data points are there in each series? And then what are the data points? Now we can try running this app up and see whether or not we've managed to draw a chart. And yes, there we go. We run it up and we can see our two series there straight away. We've got the blue line, which is the y equals cos x, and the green line, which is y equals sin x. And you can see the x-axis there ranges from 0 to 10. So we're doing really well. That's exactly what we wanted to do. So now we've run that up and you can see quite how easy it is to get going with Shinobi charts and quite how powerful it is. However, we've really only just scratched the surface. What other things can we do? For example, when you look at this chart here, if you didn't know your trig functions very well, you wouldn't know which of the blue and green lines is sine and which is cosine. So let's see if we can add a legend. Let's head back to the code. And this is inside view did load. The chart, prop, uh, chart object has a property called legend. So self.chart.legend. And within that, there's a hidden property, which by default is yes. So we're going to switch that to equal no. And let's run it up again. There we go, the legend's now appeared and we can tell from it which is the sine and which is the cosine. However, it's a little bit squashed up. Because we're on an iPhone, then it doesn't really fit very well. So if we head back again, we can specify self.chart.legend. It has a placement property. So if we set that, and we can set that to schart legend placement inside plot area. That'll mean it appears inside the chart itself. Run that up again. There we go. That's now fitting nicely over the top of the chart and we can see everything that we wish to see. Something else that's a bit upsetting on here is that the because the, the range of the y-axis is a, as it is, the, the, the series both touch the top and the bottom of the chart. We want to add a little bit of padding there so that it fits a bit better. Now if we go into the y-axis, there's these properties range padding low and range padding high, both of which take ns numbers, and they're both absolute values. So we just want to add 0.1 padding to the top and 0.1 padding to the bottom. So if we put those both in there and run it up again, then we can see there we've now got a nice bit of padding at the top and bottom, and the chart itself is looking a lot better. Great. If you start playing with the chart now, you might find it a little bit frustrating because I really want to be able to interact with it, but at the moment I can't. Shinobi charts are famous for their, their interactivity and the, the ability to just go and play with the data. So let's look at introducing that. This is actually 
performed on a per axis basis. So I can pull up my X axis here um, and I want to enable gesture panning and enable gesture zooming as well. Um, so I'm doing that on the X axis and because you have such so much control, then I can do this on the Y axis as well. So let's just pop that in there. And now we can run that up. And now I can move it around. I can I can play with it and I can, can zoom into it and move around as well. That's great. So one last thing that would be good to have a look at on here is how can I style it a little bit? So at the moment, these are just lines. But can I do filled in versions of those? Now, the best place to manage this kind of thing is where we create the series themselves. And that's down in the data source, this series at index. Every series has a style property. So that's the thing we're going to edit. Each series type has its different style type. So a line series has an S chart line series style object. And within there, you can see there's loads and loads of different properties that you can play around with to specify exactly how you want it to appear. In our case here, I just want to set the show fill to equal yes. And then I run it up again and you can see, there we go, we've gone from lines to filled areas. That's looking really good. Let's take a look back at what you've managed to achieve in the past 10 or 15 minutes. You started out creating a simple chart, adding a legend with some custom series titles, a title for the entire chart. You learnt how to add two separate series to the chart and you learnt how to make your chart super interactive through the gesture panning and zooming. If you want more information, the place to start is the Shinobi Controls website. The Shinobi Developer section contains tutorials, documentation, our active forum and access to technical support. We're always really interested in your feedback, so please do hit us up on Twitter at Shinobi Controls. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, bye-bye.